Americans are deeply ambivalent about these events. And let me try to characterize that ambivalence as simply as possible. Americans simultaneously like democracy and they like to be liked. Uh, and the Arab Spring, at least in the short term, is forcing, forcing them to come to grips with the fact that there may be some tension or even contradiction between those two primal American desires. The, Amer the Arab Spring is forcing them to choose, at least in the short term, because it is overwhelmingly likely, and we've already seen this, that democratic governments will uh, amplify voices that are skeptical about American foreign policy in the region, and perhaps even skeptical about American culture and American political uh, arrangements. It will give voice to outlooks that clash with ours. Uh, example, free speech, uh, authoritatively stated by Egypt's new president, Mr. Morsi, uh, in his address at the United Nations. Uh, you know, there is, I would say, in the face of this ambivalence, a narrow support for democratization. 50-42 is not mm -hmm. overwhelming. And there is obviously a response to cognitive dissonance on this subject. As Shibley pointed out, uh, the percentage of Americans thinking that the Arab Spring is more about freedom and democracy than Islamist groups struggling for political power has declined by two-thirds in the past 16 months. That is, that is significant. Uh, Generalization number three, and Shibley hinted at this, but given my own study of American politics, I wanted to underscore it. This survey shows signs, and I would have been amazed if it didn't, about, of acute partisan polarization on the basics of American policy, uh, foreign policy. If, if American politics ever stopped at the water's edge, it no longer does.